Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be comparing flats boats and bay boats. These are two very similar styles of boats with some unique differences that can really make a difference when you're buying a boat. Today we have the Hughes 18 Redfisher and the Sportsman 234 Tournament. And we're going to be putting these two boats head to head to see which one is best for you. Let's talk about a few of the similarities between these two styles of boats. Both flats boats and bay boats are designed around inshore fishing, with the flats boat getting its name for being able to fish the flats, and bay boats being named for their ability to fish the bays. Both boats are usually powered with a single engine to minimize weight and maximize efficiency. The general design of the boats are fairly similar too, with low gunnels and a large front and rear deck for room for fishing. Both flats boats and bay boats have center consoles as your main control station, in comparison to smaller skiffs that can be controlled with a tiller or side console. Both styles of boats work great with trolling motors to sneak up on shallow water species like snook and redfish, and they can be equipped with power poles for easy shallow water anchoring once you get to your spot. With so many similarities, the line between flats boats and bay boats can be a little blurred. So let me give you my opinion on the defining characteristics of each style of boat. Bay boats are typically bigger than flats boats. I'd say that flats boats are typically between 16 and 20 feet, while bay boats are usually between 20 and 26 feet. Some companies market and sell bay boats that are larger than 26 feet, such as the Sea Hunter 28 Floridian or the CV 270Z. But in my opinion, once you have a boat that big, it's just a small center console. It's hard to fish the flats with a 17 inch draft and twin 300 Yamahas on the back of your boat. To me, a flats boat is characterized by its ability to be pulled in shallow water. While you can still fish the flats with a trolling motor in a bay boat, to sneak up on weary fish like bonefish or permit here in the Keys, you need the ability to silently push your boat around in inches of water. This means that flats boats usually have polling platforms and push pole holders. Bay boats, on the other hand, are typically too big to reasonably pole. Another easy way to tell a flats boat from a bay boat is how the driver's seat is laid out. Flats boats usually have one bench seat across the back deck where the driver sits. Bay boats, on the other hand, have a raised leaning post where drivers usually operate the boat while standing or leaning against the seat. Now that we know how to easily tell these two styles of boats apart, let's dive into the other differences and unique features you can expect on each type of boat. The first thing that might stand out is that bay boats usually come with a T-top, while flats boats usually don't. The main benefit of a T-top is that you get protection from the sun on those hot summer days, and additional storage and room for speakers and rod holders. Flats boats usually don't have T-tops because it makes it easier to pull and there are less obstructions when casting or using a fly rod. On this Tarpon Bay 19, you can see we have a back bench seat, but a T-top as well. In my opinion, this is a flats boat because of the way the seating's laid out, regardless of the fact that there's a T-top. Because they are bigger, bay boats have a lot more storage than flats boats. This means that you can easily have five people and all of their gear with room to spare. Flats boats are usually rated at four or fewer people, and three people is really the sweet spot on our Hughes Redfisher. Storage can be a problem on flats boats, especially when carrying large items like beach floats or dive gear. The benefit of the smaller hull you get on a flats boat is that you usually get better mileage than on bay boats, and the boat can also float in shallower water than their larger counterparts. The additional size and weight of a bay boat means you'll get a better ride than a flats boat in chop. Only a couple of feet in length can make a big difference in the ride quality when the wind picks up. The larger center console you get with a bay boat gives you enough room for dual GPS units, a VHF radio, a large speaker system, and more. While the center consoles on most flats boats are just big enough for a single 9-inch GPS and other small electronics. If you do a lot of live baiting, bay boats usually have two or three large live wells. My Hughes Redfisher comes standard with a single live well, with the option for an additional release well. Cooler space is also limited on most flats boats, with a single 35 quart angle cooler as the front seat of my Hughes Redfisher. Bay boats, on the other hand, have room for larger coolers like this 65 quart Yeti, as well as built-in insulated hatches that work great for icing down the day's catch. 
Bay boats are also designed with a more aggressive dead rise, which is basically the angle the hull makes at the bottom of the boat. The larger the dead rise, the easier your hull can cut through chop. Flats boats have less aggressive dead rise to ensure that they can float in shallower water. Both boats are capable inshore and offshore. It's all about picking your days and knowing when to head home if there are storms on the horizon. Both boats are too small for major offshore trips in my opinion, and if you live somewhere that you need to drive 50 or more miles to get to your offshore spots, a center console would be a more comfortable and safer option. Here in South Florida, only 7 miles from Blue Water, either style of boat can make it out on nicer days. Bay boats will of course have the better ride, and are better suited for offshore trips than flats boats are. When it comes to trailering, if you already drive a truck, you can easily trailer either of these types of boats. If not, the lower weight of a flats boat may work better with SUVs and other smaller vehicles. Be sure to check what your vehicle is rated to tow and compare that to the estimated loaded weight of the boat you're looking to purchase. Now before we talk about cost differences, let's do a quick walkthrough of each boat for a closer look at what you're getting with each model. Hey guys, how's it going? This is Jake from Jake's Offshore Adventures. Today we're going to be looking at the 234 Sportsman Tournament Bay Boat. We'll start in from bow to stern. We have our anchor locker right here, four nice hatches here in the front of the boat. In the center here, you have a nice insulated cooler. Right here, you have a nice little spot. I like to store my ropes and people's shoes who come on the boat in here. So here we have our forward seating. It's real nice on a nice calm day to come up and sit up here. And it actually is also a live well or another cooler storage as well. Moving on to the center of our boat, we have a really nice center console here with our two nine inch Garmin screens. Down here in the center console, we have great storage two rod holders on either side of the boat with a nice rocket launcher set up here on the back of the seat. We also have rod storage up here, which is really, really nice. We have two tackle stations. You can put anything you want in here. It even comes with two tackle boxes that fit perfectly in here. When you do want to get comfy and come out to the sandbar, there's plenty of seats here. Another thing I really liked about this Sportsman Bay boat was the bilge and the bilge access. Also here in the back, we have our two main live wells on the side of the boat. Going with our power here, we have our Yamaha V6 250 horsepower. And this is perfect for this boat. Starting from the bow, my Hughes 18 Red Fisher is equipped with a Minn Kota Tarova trolling motor, which is super convenient either in the back country or on the reef. Next, we have the main forward hatch that I use for dive gear, tackle, life jackets, and safety gear. Under each gunnel is enough room for four rods per side. The forward seat of the boat is also the main cooler, which is just big enough for enough food and drinks for the day. Next we have the center console with additional rod holders on each side. My boat's equipped with a 9 inch Garmin, a Bluetooth stereo, and my Yamaha control unit. The main bench seat across the back of the boat is also the main dry storage hatch. This boat is powered with a 150 Yamaha SHO, which is the perfect fit for this boat. Before I talk about pricing, I just wanted to say that unlike my other videos, these informational videos aren't nearly as fun to produce. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by leaving a like or comment below. The biggest thing that sets these boats apart is cost. New bare bones flats boats these days usually start in the 60s and can easily get close to six figures with all of the options. While bay boats start in the 80s, but the larger models can easily get to over $150,000 when optioned out. On the used market, a good three to five year old flats boat like my Hughes can go for in the 40s, while used bay boats of the same age can be found in the 60s. Older hulls with a lot of hours can be bought for a lot less, and sometimes it's cheaper to buy an older hull and restore it rather than buying a newer model. If you plan on spending more time pulling the flats than offshore, have limited space to store a boat, and only plan on taking three or four people out at a time, you may find that a flats boat is a good fit for you. On the other hand, if you want better offshore capabilities, need additional storage, and room for five or more people, a bay boat would be a better fit. Unless you absolutely need the ability to pole, a bay boat is undoubtedly the better all-around boat. Flats boats are a good compromise for those who want the ability to pull and the capability to go offshore on those calmer days. If you really want to pull the flats, 
take a look at this video where I compare flats boats and polling skiffs. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.